Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Block Ransomware with Inky. I'm your host, Katie Bavoso from the Channel Company. The popularity of ransomware as an attack method used by bad actors is undeniably growing. There were a recorded 304 million ransomware attacks reported in 2020, a 62% increase from the prior year. And the latest research indicates that the most successful data breaches involve social engineering and a human element, meaning your clients are clicking on links they should not be clicking on. Here with me today to discuss this further is CEO and founder of Inky, Dave Baggett. Welcome, Dave. Thanks. Great to be here. Great to have you, Dave, and looking forward to this discussion on a topic that I think is incredibly timely right now. So mm -hmm. why don't we just get started with segment one and go right into it. Our first segment, a landscape held for ransom. So Dave, ransomware is not new. It's been around for a long time, but we're seeing it in many headlines recently as it has impacted many large companies in the US. Has ransomware become more common or has it become smarter and why? Both actually, it's much more common now, partly because as you might imagine, ransomware is often attached to phishing, which is one reason we're talking about it. And phishing's easy and cheap for attackers to use to get ransomware installed into their victim companies. They're also more sophisticated. Uh, if you look at some of the reports recently on the mechanisms of these ransomware uh, systems, they're quite impressively technical. And so we're seeing both a rise in the frequency um, and also in the sophistication. And I will also say we're seeing the rise of ransomware as a service, kind of like software as a service, but evil and that's contributing to this too. There are now literally outsourced organizations where you can go and ransomware somebody on, on your behalf as a service. Frightening. So now we know that not everyone causing the attack is exactly the mastermind behind it. They just had the paycheck to do it. Scary that's right. stuff. That's right. Well, Dave, question two in this particular segment, what's the most common way cyber criminals deploy ransomware attacks? You mentioned it before, but what makes this approach so successful of an option? Yeah, phishing is the go-to mechanism for ransomware uh, attackers because it's cheap and easy and it's very convincing when it's done well. So imagine setting up some mail server costs you like Nothing. It's basically just a Linux server you set up. Anyone can run a mail server on the internet and send mail, even registering domains. So suppose I'm an attacker and I want you to think I'm a trusted brand like Microsoft. I can register a domain on Namecheap with Bitcoin, by the way, that sounds plausible, like Microsoft-Update.com. I can send mail that looks like it's branded by Microsoft from that domain. And then as a recipient, you're kind of stuck because you look at this mail, it looks totally real. It might have real Microsoft branding in there. It's from a domain that sounds plausible. So you open the attachment, right? Or you log into the site and that's where the malware, malware gets in. And it's worth sort of thinking about the fact that the human is the easiest thing to manipulate behind the firewall, right? So if you convince the human to do something for you, and that is open a file generally or log into a site that has a bad payload, well, then that's the easiest way to get this stuff installed in the company, right? Inside the firewall. Absolutely, Dave. And why don't we take a moment to take a step back here? Because let's talk about ransomware itself. When I think of it, I often think of the Hollywood version that they show us where it deploys on your computer, skull and crossbones, everything yeah. <laughs> shuts down. But what is the step-by-step -step process of a successful ransomware attack on a network? And what can it cost a company if it is successful? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the cost, we've seen things in excess of tens of millions of dollars recently. I mean, the, the headlines around some of the companies that have been breached with ransomware, it's just staggering numbers. So clearly, you've got the monetary damage. There's also reputational damage, of course. But the way these attacks work is generally, as I said before, they'll come in attached to an email or there's somehow the email directs the user to do something or go somewhere that gets this, this software installed. And normally, you know, an office document or a PDF, can't do anything bad to your computer, but there's always this frontier of exploits where the attackers figure out, oh, there's a bug, and so if I craft my PDF exactly this way, I can run arbitrary code, and then what does that arbitrary code do? Well, in a ransomware circumstance, it encrypts all your files. So that means that now you can't access your own files unless you get the key back from the attacker, so they hold you hostage. And then, of course, you're probably not surprised to learn that 
one of the other things the more sophisticated ransomware pieces of software do is propagate themselves. So they start on the victim's computer and propagate themselves across the network to other machines. And of course, again, this is all inside the firewall. So all of the layers of protection that companies have put in place to block bad network traffic, those become irrelevant because this stuff's running inside the firewall. Unbelievable. Well, we think a lot about, well, aren't the native tools inside my cloud email applications enough to stop all phishing emails and ransomware attacks? Isn't that already something I don't have to worry about? So are they enough? Are those native tools enough, Dave, to stop those? Yeah, the sad fact is no. Um, you know, And that's one of the reasons why we've been focused on phishing at Inky for about six years now, because those tools are not sufficient to block these phishing emails, which then bear ransomware and other kinds of threats. And to give you some insight into why, if you think back to mail protection all the way back to the 90s, spam filtering, it was basically a matter of the mail protection systems, whether it's Microsoft or Google or whoever, looking at the content of the mail and saying, is this bad content, like it's spammy, or is it good content? And the problem with that is that often what makes a fish bad is not the content, but who sent it versus who it appears to be from. So if you think about phishing, it's very often forgery. It's often the victim thinks it's a brand that they recognize or thinks it's a person they recognize. And the attacker is very cleverly crafting the content of the mail to look really good from that standpoint. In the limit, for example, if I want you to think I'm Microsoft and I'm an attacker, I could just take a real mail I got from Microsoft, save that off and resend that to you, then the content's identical, right? So what makes the phishing bad and therefore hard to detect by these systems is it's not the content that you can scrutinize, it's the disconnect between what we call the apparent sender and the actual sender. And that's what we've devoted our efforts in R&D to has been detecting that kind of forgery, that mismatch between who will the person think the mail's from versus who actually sent it. Well, Dave, the last question in this particular segment, what are businesses often lacking to stop ransomware attacks before they can start? Yeah, you absolutely need to have an additional layer of protection for mail coming in from the internet. Um, we do a few things that, that help there, not just better detection, but also we give users guidance in the form of dynamic banners we put in the mail that help the users understand, you know, this might not be the person you think it's from. We may not be able to prove this isn't, you know, from, from your third party asking you to pay an invoice, but sure looks like it's not that person. Often that helps us block ransomware. And if it does get to the end user, at least it'll have guidance that says, hey, don't interact with this unless you confirm outside of email. So it's absolutely critical to do that. I think it's also useful to train users, to educate them, to understand you shouldn't be performing any sensitive action within your email client. So be very careful about opening attachments. Be very careful about going to sites that appear branded. It's better, for example, to go straight to your browser, type in Microsoft and go to the site that way versus clicking a link in the mail. Absolutely. And I can tell you for sure, every time I get an update that a package has been delivered, I go straight to the account, straight to the source. And I think that's the best form of advice you can give somebody. But Dave, let's talk about Inky now. We're moving on to segment two, the Inky difference. So first question in this segment, what is Inky? So Inky is a mail protection system like the ones that you hear about, like you know, Microsoft has and Google built into their system, but we've done a lot more work to enhance the detection of phishing. So we do spam detection, we do malware detection, we do the table stakes kind of stuff, but we've invested in a whole research program specifically to address this phishing problem and therefore the ransomware problem. And there really are a few things that distinguish that. One is that We've baked into Inky technology using computer vision where the machine can really look at the mail almost like a person and figure out if I gave this mail to the person, who would they think it's from? Would they think it's from a brand they know? Would they think it's from a person they know? So we're trying to mimic that recognition that humans have when they receive the mail. Because if you think about it, that's the key mechanism the attacker is exploiting to fool the victim. They're exploiting the fact that the human brain is amazingly good at looking at something it's never seen before and saying, oh, Microsoft, I know that brand, or oh, this is my CFO, oh, or this is someone at a vendor asking me to pay something. The attacker's exploiting that recognition. And so we build that kind of technology 
using computer vision and other techniques into Inky. So it can see a lot deeper into the mail effectively. You gave me a really good explanation in that first answer, but let's get a little bit more technical. How does Inky stop phishing emails and protect businesses from ransomware? Yeah, there's really two fundamental things we do differently and uniquely. One is on the detection side, we use computer vision and various kinds of matching technologies to identify forgeries from first principles. So for branded mail, that involves really literally rendering the mail. So we almost we almost act like, even though this is running in the cloud, we almost act like we're going to paint the screen. We act like we're the Outlook client or we're the Gmail client. So we know exactly pixel level what the user is going to see. And then we run classifiers, computer, computer machine learning classifiers on the output of that. So we can then say, hey, this looks like it's from Microsoft, right? Or this looks like it's from any of hundreds of brands, literally. And so that's part of Inky's detection that is at human levels of accuracy that really, again, mimics that, that ability for the human to, to recognize brand. For mail from people, again, we're trying to figure out who will the person think this mail is from? And, and importantly, is the sender really who it appears to be? Because often you have things like account takeovers where the attacker has guessed somebody's password, gotten into their real mail account. Now they're sending mail posing as somebody the victim knows so we use what we call sender profiling and social graphing to identify those, where essentially we keep track of kind of the way the sender uses words and punctuation and even their sentence structure. And we have a profile of what every sender's normal mail looks like. This gives Inky almost a mathematical way to say, okay, this mail from this person, Sally, who the victim knows, how similar is this to the mail she sent in the past? And it could be, again, writing style. It could be, well, that's weird. Sally usually mails from North America, and this is from Ukraine. Now, again, that doesn't necessarily prove the mail isn't from her, but it gives us some things to look at. So this leads me to my final point. We augment this better detection with a much better user experience. And the way that works is we put in a minority of cases, let's say 10% of emails, not 100, we put in a yellow banner that displays right there on top of the mail that gives the user some kind of guidance. It could be, hey, this looks like a wire request. Don't wire money without confirming outside of email. So like just-in-time training. Or it could be, hey, you know, this doesn't look like the normal thing Sally would send. This might be a potential sender forgery or account takeover. And by kind of changing the user experience and then augmenting that with better AI that was developed it really in academia in the 2010s, we're blocking a lot more of this stuff if it gets to users, they know not to click through, they know not to open attachments, they know not to pay, pay, and pay fake invoices, and it really does massively cut down on the problem. And our users, our customers really don't have, we've never had a customer get fished or breached or have ransomware, not a single one. It really not is effective. Not a single one. Wow, that's incredibly impressive, Dave. Thank you for sharing that. So let's talk about who would actually be able to use Inky. What size businesses and types of applications can Inky integrate with? Well, this is the great thing. And this is one of the reasons that I was interested as an entrepreneur in the phishing problem when we started looking at this. Everyone knows phishing is a problem. You don't have to be a sophisticated chief information security officer to realize phishing is a problem. You don't have to be a giant multinational bank. It's a problem that applies to every business across all sizes and verticals. And so we have customers from a handful of employees and mailboxes up to you know, large multinational companies. So the great news is it's applicable to every kind of company and it integrates with essentially every kind of mail infrastructure from a small company running Office 365 or Google Workspace all the way up to a large company that might have you know, a very complicated hybrid on-prem O365 mixed environment. That sounds like something that MSPs and solution providers within the channel would be really interested in because it's not just for larger companies, it is for those small to mid-sized businesses as well. But what else about Inky makes it so MSP friendly? I think it's it's the installation is very simple, particularly with O365. We've in fact fully automated the O365 install. So literally as an MSP, you can auto onboard your customers, install it literally without even talking to us, and set it up in, in seconds, and you'll start seeing banners in your customer's mail. So that's one huge advantage we have. Another advantage is 
we're really tightly integrated with O365 and Google Workspace. So for example, there's no separate Inky quarantine. The quarantine is just the one that you get with O365 or Google. So that's almost like it's a part of that, that platform that the provider's offering. It's sort of integrated in as though it's the same system. Similarly, authentication is all done through Microsoft or Google. So there's no separate passwords either for the admins or for the users, right? And then finally, we've put a lot of effort into making a <clears throat> what we call a dashboard, an admin control panel and dashboard that does two things. One is it lets you as an MSP see all of your teams. So you can literally manage a whole 20, 50, 100, 500 teams from this one dashboard and all in this nice hierarchical way. The other thing is we have very powerful tools to search and filter all of the decisions that Enki made about your customer's mail. So you can say, for example, show me the brand impersonations that targeted VIPs last week. And this gives you a single pane of glass to really understand from a situational awareness standpoint, you know, how threatened your customers are and also how effective Inky is at protecting them. Because most, I think, MSP customers know phishing is a problem, but it's great to also be able to show them, hey, we are protecting you. We blocked 100 fish that would otherwise have targeted your users last week and constantly show the value. And our tools let the MSPs do that really easily. Dave, that all sounds incredibly impressive, but what differentiates Inky from the competitors in your field? Yeah, obviously it's a crowded space. There are tons of vendors saying similar things. I would say the key things are, we were the pioneers of this dynamic banner concept. The idea that don't just put a banner in that says, this is external, be careful. First of all, that doesn't tell users anything. Second of all, you do that on 100% of emails and they just become blind to it. So one of the things we do is our banners go on a minority of mails. The yellow banners might say any of 50 to 100 things. And we make sure that what those banners say actually means something to the end users. They're not just cybersecurity gibberish. So the dynamic banners are incredibly important. They're really game-changing function. And it really means that Inky is kind of carving out this interesting new space, I think, between pure mail protection, like we've gotten since the 90s, and pure phishing simulation training like you have from Noble for CoFence and those guys, this is kind of in between where we're giving users guidance on the real mail they're receiving. That makes a massive difference. The other things that distinguish us from the competitors are, again, the process of rendering the mail and doing a bunch of computer vision analysis to find well, what brand does the mail look like? And is it really from a mail server working on behalf of that brand? If not, it's a bad mail, right? And similarly, social graphing and sender profiling to identify. BEC attempts, account takeover attempts. So again, it's a combination of better user experience with much better detection. And then we wrap this all together with a deployment strategy that's really simple, but is nevertheless in line so that we can modify the mail before it's delivered to the inbox to add our banner. We can move mail to quarantine if it's malicious, so users never interact act with it. And that inline aspect of it is something that we share with the security mail gateways, but is, but is really quite unique among all of the next gen phishing vendors. So we're really proud of that. That means that you know, we can deal with the mail before the user ever sees it. We process the mail in you know, two seconds average. So all good. And then finally, it's been really important to us to make sure that Inky works equally well on mobile as on desktop. If you look at the space historically, it's been very sort of Outlook desktop focused. What we've done is our banners don't require any special endpoint support, works in things like Lotus Notes, even older mail clients. Doesn't matter what mail client they're using, doesn't require a plugin, but it looks the same on mobile and desktop and web. So it's consistent across all the endpoints. Dave, let's talk more about Inky in the channel. So let's move on to segment three, partnering with Inky. First question in this, Dave, what flexibility does Inky offer partners? Yeah, well, we're a relatively new company, so we don't have nearly the constraints of a giant you know, company like a Microsoft. So in general, we want to work with our customers in the way they want to work with us. So we have flexible licensing. We're very flexible in terms of, you know, again, what email systems and clients we work with. I'll give a specific example of that. Many of the API-based phishing solutions that you hear about they don't work with on-prem exchange. And yet you've got lots of companies that are in that transition. They're migrating from on-prem to O365. Some of them may have 
some on-prem, some O3C. We work regardless of whether there's a hybrid environment. That's really important. The other thing is that we charge per mailbox per year and it's flexible. So as you add more customers from your MSP, you increase your, your license count, you pay as you go. So you don't have to make a huge upfront commitment to us to start to get the benefits of Inky for your users. And then finally, there are a lot of customization options. So you can put your MSP's logo in, you can brand. For example, if we rewrite links, we send people to a page first that can be branded. So there are a lot of ways that we try to get the MSP as a first class party in the, in the relationship with, with the end customer. And then the final thing I will say is that our investment in the automated deployment pays huge dividends for MSPs because the last thing you want to do as an MSP is have to call us, email us and say, hey, I want to add a user. With our system, you just literally go on yourself and you auto onboard your own users and it's just completely seamless. Dave, what benefits of the Inky Partner Program support its partners so that they can grow their businesses? We have dedicated support. So we have sales, marketing, and you know, product support specifically for MSPs, specifically for their needs. We also have a partner portal. We have a channel program. We have co-marketing plans. We'll help you with the kind of marketing collateral that you might need. And then, of course, just higher margins. We offer higher margins to our partners than, than our competitors do. And finally, we're setting up a referral rewards program because we really think that the best way for us to get more participation from the MSP community is word of mouth. So we want to extend the opportunity for MSPs who are believers in us. We have hundreds already. We want it to be thousands and tens of thousands. We're going to make sure that everyone who supports Inky and spreads the word is rewarded for doing that. Dave, we've talked about a lot today. There was a lot for people to take in, and I'm sure many people are asking where they can learn more. So where can MSPs turn to to get involved or to learn more about what we've talked about here today? Yeah, we have a dedicated page, inky.com slash partners. It's I-N-K-Y dot com slash partners, and you'll get all you need to know there. Uh, please come and visit us. We'd love to talk to you. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your time and expertise on ransomware and how Inky can help better protect clients. Thank you at home for watching our webinar, Block Ransomware with Inky. I'm Katie Bavoso. Take care. <laughs>